So before we get the party started, I'm just curious um, who is a Vermonter and who is like a half-time Vermonter and who's just visiting. So raise your hand if you're a full-time Vermonter. <laughs> wow, that's pretty great. Okay, half-time like house in Stratton. Oh, you put it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you have to pick, sir. You have to pick. All right, and then who's just passing through? Wow. All right, well, Vermont has a wonderful promotion. You know, Vermont is very sticky. We came here passing through in the 70s, and here we are 40 years later. So be careful, be careful. Marty Weiss is here. Would you like to come sit closer? No, I'd like to sit right here. <laughs> okay. Marty is from California, and he's here with his whole family for a week, and this is their final evening. So I feel like my swan song is to sing you home to California. So thank you for joining us. It's really been such a pleasure to have your whole family here. So I think we have a lot of latecomers coming who will be noisy and interrupt us, but they're related to me, so we will <laughs> So, I want to welcome you to the living room of the Wilburton Inn. I'm Melissa Levis, and I am one of the family innkeepers. And this is Ben Harris, who works at my brother's farm with my brother. And I'm very grateful that he's here tonight, making me sound so much better for all of you. So when I grew up, we were always like the Von Trapps, even before we had an inn, because we would always put on shows in the living room. And now that we have an inn, our living room has just gotten bigger, and our audience is full of people far and wide from the inn and from the community, and we're so happy you're here to join me on my odyssey of naughty songs of love in the age of Tinder. Who here has been on Tinder? <laughs> our young girls in the front, it's an age thing. Who here has heard of Tinder? Oh, okay. Well, many of you look happily married, so I'm glad you've only heard of Tinder and not been on Tinder. I'm going to share my journey of post-divorce love because I had heard of Tinder but never gone there until officially a year ago from today. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so somehow it's remarkable that uh, a year ago was my father's 50th birthday and we had a wonderful celebration not only of his 80th birthday but of our 30th anniversary of buying the hotel because he bought it spontaneously when he came for dinner for his 50th birthday. Oh, wow. So it was a surprise to my mother that dad decided to be a psychiatrist <laughs> and buy an inn. And we actually have a song about it. So let's start there, Ben. Our dad is a psychiatrist. Mom is a late sleeper. Never in a million years did they dream they'd be an innkeeper. But the night our dad turned 50, they dined at the Wilburton. Mom fell in the soup when Dad said with a whoop, Eureka, let's buy this in. They didn't buy it to run it like a hyatt. It's more than wealth. We're Vermonters and our mantras be yourself. Cause Dad got an art collection. Take out your hands and sing with me. Are you ready? Go like this. Say, welcome in to the Wilburton. And now we shimmy. Fun begins at the Wilburton. And we say, magically, guests feel like kin. Sway, sway at the Wilburton Inn. That was so good. We got to practice again. Ready, Ben? All right, here we go. So to the Wilmerton Fun begins at the Wilmerton Magically guests feel like him Sway, sway at the Wilmerton Do you think they make you sing along at the Equinox? 
but I never thought I would come home to run the family in. Instead, as soon as I graduated, I set off to Europe with my guitar, $300, and the very first Apple PowerBook. No GPS, no email, no cell phone. Just a dream of being discovered singing by the fountains of Rome, where I met this man. I was drinking Schweppes on the Spanish steps when this fella said, Ciao, Bella. I was born back when, careful of the town. But I was alone, and when in Rome, my day with Enzo, whoa, 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 whoa. my day with Enzo, we drank some water. Thank you. 
drugs, Mom, don't scream. So he dropped out at 14. He isn't what you choose. He's divorced and has three kids and five small tattoos. He spent time behind bars, not as a waiter. Can we talk about it later? Mom, stay calm. You're hyperventilating. We're not getting married, only dating. It's all been so much. And by the way, he is in Jewish, and I know you'll be telling friends I'm rebelling, dating this drug dealing thief. But you're the one who always said, sweetheart, it's what's underneath. So why I'm confessing is I'd like your blessing. reaction than my mother had. <laughs> but my mother was a wonderful sport, and when I called her from Naples in the back of a trattoria and another payphone, and I said, Mama, I'm so tired, and I haven't found love, and I haven't found fame and fortune, what should I do? She said, stay. Stay as long as you want, my darling. Enjoy yourself, and when you're ready, come home. And so I went one more adventure to Budapest and came home the next week. Only to find on the eve of my 27th birthday, I searched under every rock, I turned every key, but the microscopic second I stopped looking, love came to me. I didn't have to be in Barcelona to be swept off of my feet. I'm in love. Unfortunately, we had this great common love of our infant, and we stayed together, and instead of finding love and connection with my husband, I found love and connection by using my songs not to write for musical theater, not to write songs for the pop world, but to write songs for children. And so for the past decade, I was known as the Pied Piper in Pink for the five and under set all around New York City. And um, this is one of the songs that we wrote. And what I learned from Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and Wheels on the Bus and Head, Shoulders, Knees and Toes is that being interactive made the children much more invested in the performance. So I ask you to be interactive with me. So when I say kissin, you are going to blow kisses. And when I say listen, touch your ear and listen. You ready? One, two, three. Say mommy, 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 she's the one that we're kissing. Grow up to 
flap your arms. One, two, mommy says, flap your arms. Now freeze. And I don't move a muscle, no, 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 until my mommy songs that would empower kids that they could slay their own dragons and they didn't need to be rescued by the prince, that girls today were not damsel in distress. So this was one of our most popular songs from the Moe collection and we had such a good time filming it at Bethesda Fountain at the castle in Central Park and singing it at Bloomingdale's in my big beautiful ball gown. And the children of course would fall asleep and wake up and jump. You don't have to work so hard. Sleeping beauty pricked her finger. Ouch! She had no time for tears. Say, sleeping beauty pricked her finger. Ouch! Then she fell asleep for a hundred years. And it was boring to be sore. Instead of alive, it was boring to be snoring, waiting for her prince to arrive. At which point, all the children would stand up in the aisles of Bloomingdale's by the sparkly dresses and wake up, wake up, wake up, shake up, shake up, shake up. Bella and I heed the call. What could be sweller than me? 
It took four years to trust again, believe in pixie dust again, but now I feel I must again surrender to love and lust again. When I'm Cinderella, Bella the Bull, I once was Vanilla, now not at all. Then say Chow Bella and Lai the Call. Poor Cinderella had just one fella, but this Tinderella's the Bella of the Ball. But this Tinderella's the Bella of the Ball. Well, thank you. Thank you. The very first man I met from Tinder seemed perfect. He had grown up in Greenwich Village. <coughs> And I live half the week in Greenwich Village in Soho. I live one week in Soho, one week in Vermont because of my divorce arrangement. And this guy was the best of both worlds. He grew up in Greenwich Village and now was a singing social worker in Vermont, an hour and a half away. And so he really was a frustrated novelist who also was a songwriter. So in his Tinder bio it said, write to me and who knows I might fall in love with you and write a song for you. And so inspired by our correspondence, before we met, I actually wrote him this song. I never saw your face, but you make me laugh out loud. I never heard your voice. Like, one more time from the beginning. One, two, three. I never heard your voice, but you make me laugh out loud. I never saw your face, but you jumped right out from the stars fill your screen and it means you super like them. So there was this very intriguing man whose picture was merely his back in the shower and his name and his age, which was 10 years younger than my age. But I was sort of intrigued by the back and so I lifted it up to see if there was more text and before I knew it, psh, I had super liked him by accident and he immediately wrote to me and asked for a date. And I never wanted to date a man who only shows their back. That is a definite no-no on Tinder. <laughs> However, after my disappointments right and left, I thought perhaps I would give it a try. And I'm so glad I did. One date with Francois, and I became Edith Piaf. Ready, Ben? I'm so ready. And <laughs> Mon François, dans tes bras, encore, encore une fois, you could be ooh, ooh, la la.
funny, funny, funny part of my life is my Green Acres, New York, Vermont juxtaposition. So while Francois is whining and dining me in downtown hotels of New York City, I found a little friend in Vermont who I like to call Mr.
This is thanks to Joy and Amanda and me for saving the body part that starts with the letter C. Yay. The naked man is in my bed. My face might now turn red. But just as I reached for a condom, this is what he said. I really like to lick your clitoris, but I'm terrified of syphilis. So, though I feel desirous, I won't risk a virus. I do not accuse you of perfidia, but I'm frightened.
flunked the boyfriend test. I got up and I got dressed. HPV and AIDS are scary. It's important that one checks. So stay away from jerks like him and you'll get safer sex. <laughs> You know, dating is very confusing. There is a term called ghosting. Has anybody ever experienced a ghoster? Do you know what that is? I had no idea what it was until it happened to a friend of mine three times, and then it happened to me. Take it, Ben. Either your attraction or you had a bad reaction to our first date, which I thought went great. Or you're in a coma, maybe that's why you don't phone up unless I fear. Sadly, it's clear you don't feel the spark or think of me in the dark. You are a question mark. Did we work out or were we just a lark one night in Washington Square Park? Where did we miss the mark? I don't wish you a disaster, but I wish your heart beat faster. And I don't feel emotion, religion, mythology, sperm. <coughs> My father bought this in 30 years ago as a retreat center for his revolutionary theory of psychology that turns psychology into an exact science. So it combines science, psychology, emotion, religion, and mythology. And we have retreats at the Wilburton once a month and art tours every weekend to see his gallery to understand this fascinating revolution in behavior. Science, psychology, emotion, religion, mythology. I know the term makes you squirm. Let's talk about sperm. Can you say that with me? creativity for self-discovery and had the brilliant idea that to screen all the possible men out there as potential suitors, we should give them his <laughs> test. 
which I think is really a great idea. <coughs> so dad's theory is all about managing your power, because if you're too dominant, you'll be too paranoid and demanding, and if you're too submissive, you'll become passive aggressive and hold in your feelings and become hostile. So it's very important that you all learn how to manage your power in your relationships. Manage your power, manage your power. Get wisdom in a week inside in an hour. Ladies and gentlemen, step right in. Meet Dr. Levis of the Wilberton Inn at Manage Your Power today. Everyone, manage your power. Oh, <laughs> 
man. Oh, I like a man who's very primal. My no is final. Ten days felt like a lifetime 
I don't know what happens next. But I honestly thought a lifetime, thanks to just 500 texts. He picked me up with a dozen roses. I wrote in songs, poems, and all. He woke me up with a kiss each morning. Blind date to speed date, oy vey. 
I burnt out from three dates in one day. There was Sean on the lawn and comedian Sean. Darren one, Darren two, Marcello, Jim, and Stu. Little boy Sam, my handyman. It was a lot, though not many got hot. <laughs> With my lad in love, or Israeli soldier, and Le Parisienne, I felt like a one-woman UN. Five Allens, four Davids, and Mark and Dutrois. Rolf Sanjay Thaddeus, Ricardo and Francois. Rolf Sanjay Thaddeus, Ricardo and Francois. I can't even remember. Hard to keep it straight. Let me think. I know the swiping and typing in this carousel, but I'm sure there's a second person. Let me think. Let me think. Just be patient. <laughs> oh, yes, I got it. When it did work out with my crush last summer, at the time, it felt like a bummer. But looking back now, I truly am glad. I've had with Sean on the lawn and comedian Sean, Darren one, Darren, Darren two, two, Marcello, Jim, and Stu, little boy Sam, my handyman. It was a lot, though not many got hot, honestly. With my Latin lover, Israeli soldier, and Le Parisien, I felt like a one woman in Rolf Sanjay Thaddeus, Ricardo and Francois. Rolf Sanjay Thaddeus, Ricardo and Francois. It was rare if they climbed my stair, and before they could enter my home, they had to win the favor of Egizio, my neighbor, and Jetson, my fierce chaperone. It was swiping and typing in an endless carousel. Next came a text, if they seem swell, then a walk a drink at a downtown hotel. Very few cast me in their spell. Am I too picky? Finding love can be tricky, and a quickie is not what I want. I seek a man to love all her.